Hi, everybody. My name is F. Prey Wilson. I am an associate professor of medicine at the Yale School of Medicine. I am the director of Yale's Clinical and Translational Research Accelerator, uh, and I'm the creator of the Yale course, Understanding Medical Research, Your Facebook Friend is Wrong, which is available to uh, everyone for free on the Coursera platform. Um, your Facebook friend is is a bit wrong uh, today. It's been quite a day on social media. Um, once again, we have uh, widespread misreporting of uh, the effect, potential effect of hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for COVID-19. I, I sort of thought this was put to bed a while ago, and then there was a new video that came out, um, and and all of a sudden there's a there's talk. Oh, it's a, a secret cure and stuff like that. Um, it's not. Uh, uh, the, there's no new data uh, that has come out that has changed uh, the prevailing opinion um, or, or wisdom lately. Um, but that's not really what this video is about. What I want to do in this video is teach you how to find the information for yourself. Because believe it or not, right, the best way to find out medical information is not to look on Facebook or Twitter or even YouTube. Um, the best way to find the uh, medical research is to do the research yourself, uh, but you need to know how to do it. And it's not entirely straightforward, right? We're not just using Google here. So I'm just going to walk you through how I would look for evidence um, for or against the use of hydroxychloroquine in uh, COVID-19. So uh, I am going to use a website called PubMed. And what you're going to do, uh, if you want to follow along, is go into your browser window and type in pubmed.gov. That .gov tells you this is a, uh, a governmental website. This is uh, run by the National Library of Medicine. It is the central clearinghouse for all peer-reviewed medical research. So after a peer-reviewed study is published, um, about a week or so later, it'll get indexed into PubMed. So it's, 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 it's pretty up to date. Now, when you get there, you'll see a search box, and you could go ahead and just start typing and search. But we want to be a little more sophisticated than that, and uh, I'll, 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 sh I'll show you how. Um, so what we're going to do is click on Advanced. Okay. Now, when you click on Advanced, you get to this Quarry Builder. And unfortunately, PubMed is not quite as easy to use as Google. So you need to know a couple of tricks here um, to get the results you want. But it's not too hard once you know. Um, so the first thing you'll see is that there's a box here, where do you want to search? Um, and you can search by author or date or grant number. One of the best ways to search are using these things called MeSH terms, medical subject headings. These are standard, a standardized set of terms that medical librarians apply to the papers as they come in. Now, the problem with MeSH headings is that um, they aren't added immediately because a human actually needs to like read the paper and decide what it's about and things like that. So you might be a little bit behind the times if you're using your uh, MeSH terms here. So we're going to be a bit more broad than that. Um, but we're not going to search all fields either because then you get some weird stuff. You know, you get authors with last names or something weird. Um, so what I like to do as sort of a fairly broad search is to use this, the title slash abstract search. So we're going to look for terms that appear in the title of an article or in its abstract, which you're pretty much going to capture most things. Now, when we're building a query in PubMed, we want to conceptualize the entities we're searching for, the ideas we're searching for. And in my mind right now, there are two. One is the concept of coronavirus, and one is the concept of hydroxychloroquine. But we have to recognize that there are synonyms for each of those things, and we're going to build our search using those synonyms. So let's start with coronavirus. So I'm just going to type in coronavirus, and I'm going to say show index here. And the reason I do this is to kind of make sure I'm spelling correctly and whatnot. And what you can see is it's telling me, OK, there are 28,475 manuscripts uh, looking at coronavirus, and then there's all these little, you know, uh, other other smatterings of numbers. But this is my term, obviously. So I'm going to use coronavirus. I'm going to click that and click add. And you can see it appears down here in this query box. But there are synonyms for coronavirus, right? There's like COVID-19. Um, and I'm going to hit show index and look, oh, there's 38,516 COVID-19 studies, for example. Okay, we'll click on that. Now, I'm going to change, see, if I click this, it's going to add it as an and. I don't want that. This is a synonym. I'm going to add with or. So you can see when I do that, it adds it down here and it adds an or for me. 
and it puts some parentheses around here that we're gonna fix actually in the end. But this is pretty good. Um, maybe I'm interested in the, the this idea of like SARS-CoV-2, right? That's the virus that causes coronavirus. So let's see if that comes up. Yeah, that's pretty good. So let's add that with an or as well. So now I've got several synonyms for coronavirus. Let's move on to the concept of hydroxychloroquine. So I'll start out just as hydroxychloroquine and I'm gonna show my index again. And there we go, 5,158 papers about that. That's great, but I don't wanna or that. I wanna and that, right? I want papers that are talking about coronavirus and hydroxychloroquine. But now I have to think about my synonyms or my alternative terms. So I'm just gonna put in chloroquine. It's actually a different drug, but you know, similar, and I'm kind of curious about it, right? So I'm gonna add chloric, or sorry, let me search first, make sure I'm spelling it right. Yep, good, 18,000, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna add it with an or. Or, there we go. All right, so now I have this really kind of crazy query here. Um, and there's a bunch of parentheses and, and, and PubMed is not great with this when you're using multiple synonyms. So I found in my experience, you really wanna clean up the parentheses and just have one set of parentheses around each concept. So I'm gonna put a set of parentheses around my coronavirus concept. So I'm taking out all these parentheses except the ones at the beginning and the, oops sorry, at the beginning and the end there. So I only have one set around all my ors, coronavirus or COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2. And there's my big and, that's combining, that's good. And I want another set of parentheses here. So I'm gonna take out, I'm gonna take out these two, I'm gonna take out that. Okay, so now we have a big and, um, and I've got the start of my search. It's not the end of my search, and I'll show you why in a minute. But okay, so this looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and click search. All right, and what do I see? Well, I've got 961 results. Okay, that's that's a lot of reading that I might have to do. Um, but I can filter that down a little bit. So for one thing, you can see over here a timeline of how often this search would have hit. And as you won't be too surprised, there's a couple of weird hits from, you know, 2005, which might be, you know, this could be the SAR, original SARS or something like that, right? Um, but, but a big spike, here we go. Almost all of our results are in 2020. So I can, I can certainly filter down to like 2018 here. It's not gonna help us very much. Now I'm just down to 945, nothing terribly special there. Um, okay, now 945 is still too much. And you can see that there's all these filters that PubMed builds in. And you're gonna be really tempted to click that randomized controlled trial filter. I am too, because randomized controlled trials are the gold standard for medical research. But I don't wanna do it. Um, and the reason I don't wanna do it is because it's not always indexed perfectly as what is a randomized trial in PubMed. So what I'm actually gonna do is go all the way back to my search. So this is too many results. I'm going back to my search, going back to advanced, and you'll see here, my search history now is showing up. And you can see, here's my original search with 961 hits. And then, you know, when I filtered it from 2018, I went down to 945. I'm gonna go back to my original search, click on actions, add query. So that's gonna add my query here. And you can see it looks just good like it did before. But I'm gonna add another term to the title or abstract. And that's the term randomized. If I show index, you can see, oh yeah, that's a very popular term, randomized. Okay, so I'm gonna add that as an and to the end here, all right? And then I'm gonna not forget that the British people spell it in this bizarre way, randomized like that. So we're gonna throw an or in for our colleagues across the pond for randomized. All right, so now I have a third term. I have coronavirus, chloroquine, and randomized. I've gotta fix all my damn parentheses. So it shouldn't be too hard. Um, that looks pretty good. There's an extra parenthesis here, which I don't like. And randomize, we're gonna take out these two. And okay, so now what I have are one set of parentheses around all my or terms, and then the big and set of parentheses and set of parentheses. I think I did that right. So let's search and what do we get? Okay. <laughs> a big error because I, now I have 105,547 uh, results, which means I messed up my parentheses somewhere. So let me go back and add my query. 
coronavirus or, 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 there are my parentheses, and hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine, close my parentheses there, and randomized or, oh, there's a parenthesis there. You see that? Mess the whole thing up. All right, I'm glad you I'm glad you saw that because you do have to be careful with this. So 105,000, not right. Let's click search and ah, 104. So we're in much better shape now. Um, now this is not perfect, right? Because look, we've got uh, hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine for treatment of SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19, but it's a review paper. It's not original research, and the reason it's showing up is because in the abstract. They're saying randomized somewhere, right? In the abstract of this study, not in the title, but in the abstract, they're saying something like, oh, there have been multiple randomized trials. So let's go back. And this time we're going to, uh, we're going to go back to our, our, our original query here, add that in. And this time, instead of title abstract, I'm just going to, I'm going to add my randomization term just in the title. Okay. Randomized. Show index, we're gonna add it with and, and randomized like the British, show index, and we're gonna add it with or, and then I'm gonna fix my parentheses, and if you're following along at home, I hope I'm not doing this wrong, and get rid of those, and get rid of that, let's try that. Ah, beautiful, 35 results, here we go. And what we can see here are, is a good list of randomized trials that are looking at hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine in COVID-19. Now it's not perfect, look at this, a call for randomized controlled trials to test the efficacy of chloroquine. Okay, so this is like a appeal, we should do this. Okay, not useful, but here we go. Effect of high versus low doses of chloroquine diphosphate as adjunctive therapy for patients hospitalized with severe acute respiratory syndrome infection, a randomized clinical trial. Beautiful, you can see it was published in JAMA Network Open. And the great thing about PubMed, I can click this and I can read through, and obviously you can too, but I might look at the uh, uh, conclusions, and it says the preliminary findings of the study suggest that the higher chloroquine dosage should not be recommended for critically ill patients because of its potential safety hazards, especially when taken concurrently with azithromycin, also tamivir. These findings cannot be extrapolated to patients with non-severe COVID-19. Um, and we can look at the results for more details here. Um, not very exciting. I'll just go back. <clears throat> Effect of high versus low doses of chloroquine diphosphate. Well, that's not placebo controlled. Let me skip that right now. Randomized trial of hydroxychloroquine as post-exposure prophylaxis for COVID-19. So this is an interesting one. This is a New England Journal of Medicine article, which randomized people to placebo versus hydroxychloroquine um, after a high-risk exposure to COVID-19. And what you can see here is new illness compatible with COVID-19 did not differ significantly between participants receiving hydroxychloroquine, 11.8% and those receiving placebo, 14.3%. Um, now, yes, 11.8 is less than 14.3, but you can see that the uh, p-value associated with that is 0.35, which means you'd, you'd see results like that even if hydroxychloroquine didn't work at all about 35% of the time. Our p-value threshold uh, for significance is 0.05, so this is a non-significant uh, trial, so nothing exciting. Oh, I mean, it's good, science is exciting, but nothing to, uh, to say we have a cure here. Um, this uh, is, let's see, hydroxychloroquine post to prevent severe acute respiratory syndrome among results, a structured summary of a study protocol. So this is actually the protocol for that trial, um, which is fine. Uh, you've got another post post exposure pro prophylaxis. Um, here's one for pregnancy. Uh, randomized double-blind trial um, in healthcare personnel. Um, so that sounds pretty interesting. Uh, let's click on this one. Oh, this is a structured summary of a study protocol. Sorry, so this is just the protocol. So you do have to read through these a little bit. Um, this is another protocol paper. Um, we'll show more because I know there's a few more. Here we go. Um, here's the this uh, BMJ paper, hydroxychloroquine in patients with mainly mild to moderate coronavirus disease, open label randomized controlled trial. Open label means they knew what they were getting. So you have to always worry a little bit that there's placebo effect here. And if you skip to the conclusions, you can see administration of hydroxychloroquine did not result in a significantly higher probability of negative conversion than standard care alone in patients admitted to the hospital with persistent mild to moderate COVID-19. Adverse events were higher in hydroxychloroquine recipients than non-recipients. Okay, there's another randomized trial not being very encouraging 
um, and so on and so forth. Uh, and um, I encourage you to do these searches yourself. And I will put this, uh, these, this search term in the uh, description on this YouTube video <clears throat> so that you can actually just copy and paste it and you don't have to go through all the nonsense that I do. You can also set a, um, an alert for the search term uh, so that um, uh, if a new paper comes out that matches that search term, it'll hit your inbox, which is pretty fun. Um, so a number of uh, studies here to look at, but I can tell you without spending all the time that we have no good evidence in any of these randomized trials that hydroxychloroquine changes the outcome in COVID-19, um, much less cures COVID-19. Um, and so what I want you to keep in mind is that, you know, that original search with um, 900 some odd papers before we narrowed it down to the randomized trials, right? It's not hard to put together an observational study and get it published. It's just not. And if you just pick, you know, one of those, if you cherry pick out of that group, you're going to get into trouble. So you need to know how to look for high quality data. And the highest quality data are randomized controlled trials. Are there enough yet to say that hydroxychloroquine doesn't work in any situation? No, of, co of course not. You're never done. You're never sure that it's not going to work. But, but I am sure it's not a miracle. I'm, I'm quite sure of that because we have enough data now to say, okay, they've tried it in a bunch of different settings and it hasn't, you know, hasn't sh shown anything significant. Um, there might be better ways we spend our, our, our time. And, um, and, and for example, the exciting news about dexamethasone, another cheap, widely available drug that does show a reduction in mortality. Um, so, you know, less people say I'm a shill for pharma or something and only, you know, want people to use remdesivir. I'm, uh, dexamethasone is great. I just want the evidence um, to support its use. And right now, the evidence is not there for hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine. So um, that's a little uh, tutorial on how to use PubMed to get high quality evidence and figure out for yourself what the truth is, because you sure as hell aren't getting it on Facebook. Thanks so much.